Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Tim Checker about getting all team members to contribute towards the strategic goals of the organization. Tim Checker, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hi, John. It's a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. I'm super excited to have a fun conversation today about strategic goals and organizations and really how we can utilize everyone on the team to contribute towards those goals. Now, that may sound obvious. Uh, Of course, we want alignment and we want everyone to contribute towards those goals. But that can be easier said than done, and people's attention gets drawn in different uh, directions, and there's a lot of things that we can unintentionally do that will undermine our ability to have that alignment and to move everyone forward towards the strategic goals. So that's going to be the focus of our conversation today. As we get started, I wanted to share Tim's bio with everybody. Tim is a growth consultant who helps companies, entrepreneurs, and students achieve fast and consistent growth. Working with 17 startups to date, some of his best achievements include helping two startups receive 1.7 million euros in Horizon 2020 funding, increasing MRR of one startup from 80 K to 300K in less than 18 months and completing projects such as implementation of OKRs, building company dashboards, rebranding, and product launches. In addition to that, Tim's passion for helping people realize their potential to bring their ideas to life means that he also teaches bachelor's and master's programs at two universities. Uh, What a tremendous background. Tim, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, And I I also share the scholar practitioner kind of orientation. I I love that um, that's also part of your focus. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? Yeah, sure, John. Uh, Thanks for asking. I mean, it's a funny background because I've tried a lot of things and I I love to keep myself busy because if not, I think I'll go crazy. So I started really in sales, then I got to marketing and uh, then I did a bit of product and operations. That's why I called it growth. Uh, not just because I do growth marketing or anything like that. It's more like growth consultancy. Um, so operations, sales, product, and so on. And that's how I built my uh, career until today. Um, and just wanted to touch up on the academic stuff is I've I've given myself a 25% of my time to give back by teaching. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Because um, I really do believe that, um, you know, in our, in my time, especially, uh, education wasn't that good. Um, you know, there was, everything was very theory-based, uh, to learn by heart, uh, nothing practical. So, so I promised myself, I said, I'm going to try to give back by uh, sharing everything that I know. Yeah, that's wonderful. And theory and conceptual stuff is has its place, but you got to get past that, right? You got to get into application uh, and experiential learning is is really research has shown that's the best way to learn material uh, is to just practice by doing. And so matching up the theory and practice with actual experience and application is the key. Uh, and that means we need people that aren't just ivory tower scholars teaching, but we need people with actual practitioner experience also teaching. That's wonderful. It's very generous of you. Um, part-time teachers don't make very much. <laughs> and I, uh, may, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And I, I actually don't know what you make at your, um, your institutions. Um, but I suspect, you know, my experience has been part-time uh, professors don't make a whole lot. So it really is uh, um, an attitude of giving back, right. And, and paying forward. And uh, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. No, John, it's really, because it's not even the money at all. It's like those young, young minds. I, I get amazing interns. I get really nice people to learn from as well. Right. So when I teach masters, especially I do a bit of bachelor's, but mainly master's degrees, I learn so much myself. So it's kind of a win-win situation, right? I'm, I'm, I'm teaching whatever I know, or I'm giving whatever I know, and I'm getting from their 
their their creative young minds or different angles and, and that really keeps me uh moving forward every day so i absolutely love it yeah cool and i i love that too that that's the, the same reason i love teaching why i wanted to get into teaching as well all right tim so as we launch on into this um area of focus for our conversation today uh why don't we frame up first the importance i mean maybe it's obvious but the importance of having an alignment of strategic goals for the organization. You, you do a lot, a lot of growth consulting. Why is it important to have that kind of strategic mindset um, as a foundation? And then we can get into talking about how to align our people to move towards that together. Yeah, it. I mean, you say it sounds obvious, uh, but you know, it does sound obvious in the beginning. Uh, but when you start digging into companies, and I've seen it from you know from 17 employees uh, till uh, 350 employees or so on is you'll ask the goals of a company and you'll hear different things. <laughs> and uh, it's funny, but usually the CEO will always tell you about the revenue based goal. Um, you know, then you have that mid management will have a bit more aspirational, inspirational goals for the team so that it's not just revenue based. Um, and, and that makes you really row in different directions. You know, everybody's running in different directions. They're rowing in different directions and so on. And, um, you know, every company is like, oh, let's put OKR so everybody knows his alignment and so on. It does take two to three quarters for OKRs to really work well. OKRs are missing a few bits. I'm sure we'll discuss in a bit. Um, but I think that it's super crucial because if everybody and, and I'm not talking about managers, directors, executives, but even, you know, it could be a marketing assistant. If the marketing assistant even knows the goals of the company, of, of the teams and so on, they can bring in some great ideas, great experiments, great things to try. Um, and I and I found out that we're missing a lot on the collective intelligence, if that makes sense. And that's kind of what I'm trying to focus lately with my clients. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And it really starts uh, from the beginning. So if you can have that kind of strategic vision uh, and purpose for the organization and communicate it well, then that can feed into, you know, the, the recruiting and the hiring process and the onboarding and the performance management and ongoing coaching and, and mentoring discussions, career development plans, all of those things can have the, the core values of the organization, the mission, the, the vision, the purpose at the core of, of what those things are about. And that can then assist you towards, you know, having that better alignment of the people on the team to move towards that, uh, that overall organizational purpose. But like you said, even though it sounds obvious, it's hard to do because people have different jobs with different, you know, folk areas of focus with different incentives incentivizing different behaviors and all of a sudden you start to pull people in different directions and unless you're you're very mindful about organizationally how things are set up and the mechanisms at play you, you actually undermine yourself <laughs> uh, and that, that seems counterintuitive but it's true like you it's the, the the number of times that organizations and leaders are undermining actively undermining their own efforts uh, to try to help the organization succeed its goals is 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 huge um, and so taking the time to step back and to really to analyze those mechanisms at play and what's contributing to either the function or the dysfunction is going to be really, really important. A hundred percent. And just what you said in the beginning, it's if you have those goals very clear and there's that just cause as Simon Sinek says, or mission, vision, values, as you know, you mentioned, um, then what happens is that that will even affect your employer branding. You'll have a better em employer branding. So even talent will want to come and work with you. Right. But if you just mention that your goal is very revenue based, then that's not going to be amplified by all the team members. They're not going to talk about it outside at the pub, at the bar, whatever. Right. But if you do have a, a very aspirational goal, an ultimate objective, if you may call it that, you will start sharing it. And as you share that, you will really bring people on board believing in that mission and i think that's what's missing in a lot of the companies that i've seen um the companies that are growing uh, very fast usually they are very mission driven companies and and they're very vocal about their mission and that mission is never about a revenue the revenue will come if you do achieve that mission the revenue the money comes with it this is what we need to realize it's if we keep just focusing money 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 then we're obsessed about that and we're not solving that problem that the company was created for so so i always say it, and i'm just going to say it now it's you know be obsessed about that problem that you're trying to solve you know and, and the rest will will come in hand it will come together on, on its own 
Yeah. Yeah. You, you exist for a reason. You're providing some sort of value to the marketplace through various products or services or both. Um, and you need to be relentless about providing value to the market and a good, having a good customer experience. And it, if you're focused merely on the bottom line uh, revenues, you're going to forget about a lot of other really important things that are actually the very cause and the drivers of that revenue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, 100%. And, and I think I love what you said, the customer experience. This is, I mean, it's not a new trend. Uh, you know, it should have been done for forever. Uh, but it's sadly becoming a little bit of a new trend, isn't it? Customer experience and, and so on. And to be honest with you, it's like I've seen the difference in the last three years, even from uh, certain clients that I still talk to or are still do some kind of work again. It's their mindset has shifted a lot from, you know, let's close deals to let's fix problems for these clients. And when that happens, I've seen these companies, you know, go through a round of investment much quicker. Uh, their customers love what they do. And that becomes a new channel, isn't it? It just amplifies it. The customers talk to others and so on. And, and you know, it's not a linear channel anymore. It becomes a bit of a loop. You know, you get one client, talk to another, they talk to somebody else, they bring another client. And then you've built a, a lead generation machine by not mm -hmm. actually focusing on the lead generation machine, but focusing on the experience of those customers, you know, and, and I think that um, 2022, we're going to see this more and more. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, so that's wonderful. So with all of that in mind, then I think that's a really strong foundation for what I, where I want to go with the rest of the discussion. So now what do we really do about getting all team members on board, mm -hmm. bought in to actually contribute towards um, this shared vision, this shared um, strategic goal and purpose of the organization. Um, because, I mean, certainly, as we've already discussed, it's not a given that your organization is going to have a clear, you know, strategic purpose that everyone um, understands. But let's just say, for um, discussion's sake, that that is in place. We've already done that. That's hard enough work alone. But we've already done that. So now how do we get everyone on board? Well, yeah, if you have that, like we do that just cause mission and so on, and we forget about it. We're like, okay, we've done that exercise, you know, we know our purpose and we just put it, you know, in a document almost, you know, and, and we, we file it and we close it. We don't live it every day. So what I do recommend, it's it's having that workplace, like it could be uh, a, a tool like Notion, right? Um, or anything, or even your G Suite somehow, when you open up the first thing in the day, have that sentence right i know that we said that poster in, in in offices it's it's boring you know about the values and so on but the mission of the company being there uh, when you're making decisions when you're logging in when you're going to talk to someone external when you're going to talk to a client and so on if you have that that starts becoming engraved in your mind and you're doing uh, actions towards that you're taking better decisions in my opinion um and what happens a lot is that when you have this ultimate objective just cause mission and so on is people you know uh, companies usually go for okrs right objectives and key results and then they start forgetting a lot of things they start talking only about the positive, right? What is the objective? What are the key results we're, we're aiming for? Nobody talks about any of the blockers. Nobody talks about any of the issues, the, the, the challenges, right? As I call it. Nobody talks about that. And we're missing a massive growth opportunity on not speaking about these and always looking at the positive side of things. I'm not, a, I'm not a pessimist. I'm not saying let's talk about negative stuff, right? But there are things that blocks us from that growth. Let's highlight that. Let's amplify that. Let's make sure that every team member knows that, John. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, The Journey of Becoming a Truly Remarkable Leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue. What some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There's no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of our problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path 
and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Yeah, and, and we can't put our head in the sand, right? And I've been in organizations like that too. And like, I get it. I, I want to have a positive development oriented culture. And if all we're ever doing is pointing out problems and never working towards fixing things, that can really weigh you down, right? And, and that's not what we're talking about, though. We're talking about just having a psychologically safe environment where people can actually speak up and speak out about the re- very real problems that they see, things that are undermining and blocking the success of the organization. And so rather than labeling someone um, as a dissident because they are, you know, challenging somebody or because they're pointing something out, we can acknowledge that and we can uh, and applaud it and say, yeah, thank you. Now, what are we going to do about it? And then you can start to creatively work towards a solution, just like you would do for your customers, right? You, you try to recognize the problem, work towards a solution. Same thing within our organizations as we see these blockers, as you mentioned. I love what you said there, John. You know, you said, thank you. Like, we know the problem. If if we know the problem, then everybody else can contribute an idea. They can contribute a solution. They can contribute, um, you know, an experiment. They can contribute something that they believe in that can be tested or so on. But if we don't talk about it and we take this challenge uh, on our own and then we're in our desk and we're trying to fix this, two, three days we're trying to fix this problem or this challenge or whatever you want to call it, right? I don't want to be negative on it, but, you know, it's an issue, it's a challenge. Um, We are the only mind thinking about this. Right? We're the only brain thinking about this. The second that we highlight that and we amplify that in a company and you have all your team members seeing that suddenly this is where collective intelligence gets tapped into. Right? Suddenly a marketing challenge can be fixed by a finance person because they had an idea and they have a completely new angle. And sorry, but this is why I get paid as a consultant, right? Is to have that new fresh angle that you, because you have the tunnel vision a little bit. This is why we pay consultants a lot of money, right? For us to come fresh. We don't know exactly what your company has been doing every day, but we can see those problems and we can highlight it and, and amplify them for you. And you're like, oh, wow, we didn't think about that. Right. But maybe some of your other team members might have thought about or the challenge itself or the solution as well. Right. So so I think it's really being transparent, not just on the positive side, but on the blockers, on the challenges, issues and watch, watch, watch your growth, because, you know, this is why you have all these team members. This is why you hired them, because they are intelligent. They have a vision themselves for certain things. And please, you know, make sure that you're listening to every team member. and, And that's what I that's what I've given myself another mission is, you know, how can I highlight and how can I amplify collective intelligence in companies? You know, how can I help them grow with what they already have, which is their team members intelligence? Yeah, yeah, I love it. So, and you already mentioned uh, OKRs, for example, and how that can potentially become problematic. Um, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. And then also, if there's other um, blockers, as you've define them uh or if there's other common blockers that you see over and over and over again maybe we can explore those a little bit too mm-hmm. um so i mean okay is great you know they were they were designed by an intel a while ago google took him and it became a huge topic didn't it there's a great book about it uh, measure what matters um that i do recommend for everybody to read uh for goal setting um but i think we didn't innovate on on okrs we kept it there and what happens is objectives, key results. Again, super positive. I've I've met someone that was using a different template and I loved it. It was more uh, objectives, purpose, a key result, initiatives, and blockers. Right. So they took OKR. So they put a, they still put the objective and the key result, but in the middle they put purpose. Why? Why do it? And then they've put initiatives to understand the priorities and so on, and and to tap into collective intelligence. Right. The initiatives is where people can bring some uh, some initiatives and so on. But they've also said what stands in in our way. Right. The blockers. The, I really love that, and that inspired me a lot on on working on my own uh, framework um, that I've been testing for a while now with. Um, a few of my clients, which I'm writing a book about it. So I'm not going to give everything yet. Uh, hopefully the book should be out uh, next year, hopefully end of summer or so. And that's basically what I call the GCO frameworks, um, goals, challenges, and opportunities, 
right? So the, your goals is still your OKRs, your objectives and key results, all those numbers and amazing things that you want to achieve, they are, they, are, they are on your goals, but then suddenly you have your challenges, right? Challenges could be your blockers, your issue log, could be anything that anyone can, can actually um, put it out there, right? Uh, and then suddenly you have your opportunities and the opportunities, it's not just ideas because ideas, I found it a little bit fluffy in the wording, sadly. Um, and opportunities is very mission driven, it's very company driven, it, it, it is driven uh, to to excel and to grow the company. So so I've been working on this GCO framework by taking certain frameworks that I already know, um, issue logs, OKRs, ideation sessions and, and design sprints and so on. And I'm trying to simplify them in, in something that it's, it's very obvious and that we can start documenting about our challenges and then let everybody else come on to opportunities uh, from the team members. I think that that is going to open up a bit more uh, and I've tested it and it does work because when, when you put that challenge out there and somebody else sees it from a different team, different department, different region, it could be anything, they're suddenly they say, hey, I have an opportunity for that. I've been thinking about that myself a lot. And they, they, they do bring something to the table to, to, to overcome that challenge. And I think that that's been crucial, uh, in my opinion. Second, second part of your question was, John? Yeah, so what are some of the other common blockers that you see yeah. over and over again? Yeah, well, uh, one, of, <laughs> one of the most obvious blocker, I think, it's uh, siloing departments, right? And because we've siloed departments, sales and marketing is always a problem. This is what I've realized. It's, there is always this fight between the quality of leads right to so marketing will say hey we bring great leads and sales will say no they are not that good because we can't close them or so on and, and i see you smiling there because i'm sure you've seen this yourself many times and and, and and you know and sales says no the the leads are shit and then marketing says no the sales guys are not good bam you have separated the two teams already they are not going to work together they are not going to bring ideas together they're not going to try to do success together because they're going to think about their department the numbers that they're bringing they're going to oh, and revenue base and the sales and the marketing is going to only think about leads mqls right marketing qualified leads that is is it's the biggest blocker i've seen and this sadly happens right away from 15 20 employees on that's it siloed Right. So, so this is what, what I've been trying to do as well with a few of my clients, even if it's for a short period of time or a, a percentage of your time is to do little squads. Right. Is to put a marketing person, a salesperson, a customer service person, even a finance person together. Right. Twenty five percent of their time and let them bring ideas together. Let them look at the growth of the company together. And that, I think, overcomes that blocker. They start understanding each other's work as well. And when they start understanding from each other's work, they don't blame each other or they don't point fingers anymore. They together collectively um, tackle that challenge. I think another blocker that I see a lot is we believe that tools will fix everything. So we go and we get hundreds of tools, right? I love tools. You know, there's some, some, some of my friends call me Tool Time Tim, right? And I'm actually going to start um, hopefully a podcast stream around tools, Tool Time Tim. Um, and Everybody thinks that tools will bring you the solution, right? So you take out on tools, many, many, many tools. But what happens is that we don't use them 100% efficiently. We don't use each tool efficiently. And one team member will use Notion, as we were mentioning, and another team member will use uh, Evernote or, or just uh, Google Docs, right? Suddenly, that knowledge, that information it, is broken, right? The, the, the information that is on Notion is not on Google Docs. The, the information that is on Google Docs is not somewhere else. And I think this is one of the biggest blockers that I see. And, and as a consultant, the first thing that I ask is like, where is your knowledge management? Where is your source of truth? And everybody's like, oh, okay, well, we have a few docs here. We have a few docs there. I'm like, exactly, right? Until people find these, these, these docs, you've lost time. They possibly lost energy as well, right? And creativity goes down because I've been searching for this doc for a while. So please, please, please create a central location create a knowledge management system from the get-go. You know, the earlier you can create that, the better, right? Because it's less information, uh, you have a system and then all the information can flow correctly. But if you're already in your company for many years and you have a lot of information there, it's never too late to start centralizing that, right? Because that 
if it's not a blocker today for you, it's going to be blocker for somebody else that maybe you're not aware of that already is. I think, John, you've had experience about that, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think the silos are a big issue. I think the the ability to, to share knowledge and information and um, institutional knowledge, for example, is a huge thing. As people leave the organization, you, you end up losing so much. And so there's a lot we need to do there. Uh, Tim, I mean, all of these are great. Uh, suggestions. I really appreciate uh, all of your insights as we try to figure out how we can really get people bought in and on board and aligned with the overall strategic goals of the organization. Uh, I note the time and I'm going to have to let you go here in just a minute, but before we close, uh, would you please uh, share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, your team, um, your, your upcoming book, anything like that, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the best thing is to go to my website, which is timchucker.com, uh, T-I-M-C-A-K-I-R.com. Uh, with the first name and last name, you can search me on LinkedIn. I'm quite active on there. That's the, Now I've decided 2022 especially. Uh, that's going to be the only channel that I'm active on, on social media because the rest, I think, is too busy and too fluffy. Um, and I do have also a 15-minute call for anybody. Uh, you know, to bounce ideas off, to ask me questions, to tell me about their problems, see if we can fix it together and so on. That's also, there's a link on both my site and on LinkedIn and, I'm, and I love to meet people. So please do take that time. Um, the last sentence word or, you know, things to say about, I think the topic is, do take the time to think about this. Don't say, oh, my company's going, we're growing, we're, we're generating revenue and not really stop a second, pause a second and really design systems according to goals, to challenges, to opportunities or, or whatever we mentioned on here. Take the time today because um, really that's going to help your growth. And if you think you're growing already and you do that, you're going to grow even, even better exponentially. Right. So please do take the time. Um, you know, that's the first thing that I recommend to all my clients. It's let's stop a second. And it's a perfect time to do that. Yeah, well said. Tim, it has been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Tim and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years with increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition. The average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital. 
exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.